yet another interesting moment to talk sports in the studio of Sahara TV. You know, it's never a dull moment when we come around to talk sports here. We have a lot of issues, a lot of information, a lot of news. I have with me in the studio Muda Shirushitu of 360 uh, degree television, so to say. And on my left hand side, I have uh, Kelechi, Kelechuku, I call him Ogu. He's an in house analyst here and is joining us for this edition. Guys, good to have you on the show for this very edition of. Sahara TV. Kelele. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Good, good to have you. Mudashiru. As usual, I won't turn down such an invitation for, especially when it comes from someone like you. I actually have to make sure that um, we let the world know the, uh, what's happening, um, especially from a very neutral analyst perspective of the news you just told them out. Okanba oh, broke 22 year old record, set by another Nigerian, Mary Onyali Omagbemi. And, you know, over the weekend as well, in Faraway, Texas. What's your makeup of this? Yeah, fantastic. If you look at the progression of um, Okagba Blessing's um, record, let's know that that record was in 200 meters. Um, it has been there for many years, as far as back in 1996 in August, where Moya set that record, and nobody saw that record. But, but looking at that 200 meters race and the uh, and, and timing, uh, personal timing, you can see that there was a very, very, very um, progressive sort of in a, in, a, in a race from 2000 down here to 2018. So it's a very, very good one. And moreover, it's good for Nigerians in the sense that these are um, Commonwealth Games year. Let's not forget she has won um, a medal in Commonwealth Games at um, 200 or 100. Um, at the long race, if I'm not mistaken, she has a medal in, uh, in the Commonwealth Games. So I think it's a very good one for Kagwe to actually do that in the Commonwealth um, year when Nigeria is hoping that um, you can take away um, the bad omen of Glasgow, Glasgow 2014. But, you know, is, she's also competing in the 100 meter in the next couple of days before she finally joins uh, other team, Nigeria team, at uh, uh, the fast approaching Commonwealth, Gold Coast Commonwealth Games in Australia that was, uh, is going to commence for the 4th of April to 15th of April. Now, in the 100 meter, an Ivorian is holding that record. Do you also see your Kagbari doing the magic like she, she was able to do? In the 200 meter. It's just unfortunate for all that um, where we slept, you know, in the past, Avrian took over um, the the track and field in Africa. Um, you know, in the past, when we talk about track and field, there's only one country, and that is our beloved country, Nigeria. But we all slept at a particular time, and the Avrians um, 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 took over. We've always made ourselves of recent to be one man track and field, queen, and all that. It has always been one person, and that's been Okagbari. Shows how far we are falling in track and field. So if Okagbari should get a more motivation from this, we could hope that perhaps this might be the end of the 100 meter race domination by the Avrian side. Oh, definitely. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll get to see in the next couple of days. Uh, we'll talk football now. Nigeria Super Eagles. You know, against all hearts, playing against the Polish national team in far away Wroclaw, uh, Poland. And a, a lot of people, you know, it was a kind of misreaction. Well, I'm going to go to come to you, Kelechuku, uh, here, because um, Nigeria defeated uh, Poland 1 0, and they played away from home. They defeated Poland at home. Judging by the rating of the Polish national team, they are six, according to the FIFA ranking, and Nigeria is about 50. Uh, 57 precisely. But when you look at the makeup of the match, are you satisfied with the level of play in that game? On Nigeria's part, I, I am not success, satisfied with the performance. The, they could not spring passes together. I think they just put up a very good defensive structure. <laughs> but we want more than that. We don't want the functional football. It's just like a team that was hanging on. They were just like a team hanging on for the victory. Yeah, they were very great defensive displays. Wilfred on the D and the Oibo wall at Leon Balogun and Thuluste Kong. But besides that, there was no link up play between the midfield and the attack. The major challenge or problem I saw in that game is Kelechi Henacho. What do we do with Kelechi Henacho? You people have said you should play him as in um, uh, behind the striker 
play him in that playmaker role, and he was deployed in that position. And <laughs> we didn't feel the link up between him, Igalo, Moses, and Iwobi. Right. Good, to the good analysis from uh, Kelechukwu there. But I'm going to come to you, Mida, uh, Muda, this time around. Looking at uh, Mikel was not available for that game, and uh, Joel Obi stepped and you know came rose to the occasion in that game. But the midfield was not really as you know chalky as you would have expected it because uh, even uh, the Lewandowski that uh, came up in that game. You wouldn't say because they, they, they were not able to, you know, uh, get a goal in that game, even though there were controversies that ball crossed the line and, you know, there was no uh, uh, the, the video this, uh, to, to detect all of that. But again, the midfield, what really came up in that day? Because, because when you look at that game, you would expect that with the caliber of players that we have in camp, even though Mikel was not available, but we still have quality players. Yeah, we don't tend to get satisfied most of the times as Nigerians in everything we do. But let's not forget the importance of the game, that it's a friendly match. And let's not forget that it's to spring, um, to do our, cross our T's and dot our I's. So obviously, it's, um, it's, it's a game where everybody would definitely see a lot of mistakes. But that mistake is meant to be corrected. And that mistake is meant. But let's stop giving so much um, respect to our op um, European um, opponents. Because we saw that um, there's so much uh, impossibility. A lot of Nigerians were saying we couldn't win that match. But we saw Victor Moses did. We saw that we have the superstar amongst us. Um, we saw, but looking at the mid midfield, you know, I don't think we were actually missed. Onazi came from the bench. Yeah. To you know, he came into that game. He played from the bench, and when he came in, the midfield was not uh, the defensive because in Didi, he was expecting Didi to you know uh, play a very fantastic football like he is, he's, he's currently doing for his club Leicester City. But coming back to the national team now, the, is it that they've not really gelled together as a, as a team from playing from the midfield, supporting the attack? Yeah, that's our expectation should be into so much because, you know, these are, we are still on the process. It's a progression. We're still going to play Serbia some tomorrow. So I think right now it should be noted that um, it is not about a perfect team. It's about the abilities for us to progress into the World Cup. What we saw Joel be doing I'm um, Onazi coming on bench, you will be an analyst. But if there's anything I'm going to fault in the process of the play, it's the fact that our attackers don't bite hard enough. Mm. It's, they've only shown that several times, and that shows that Igalo might not be what Nigerians are looking for. And that's why sometimes you see Nigerians calling for the return of Obafemi Martins. Nobody will ask Obafemi Martins to come back if you have someone that can bite, you understand, properly. Nobody will ask uh, these guys to come back. We understand if the amateur has been able to, to justify his inclusion in the front place. You understand? Um, but for somebody I think that I know that might actually do so much at the World Cup, but the other things might not understand his style of play is the Wenger boy called Alex Uwobi. He has tactics on his head, he has to play the springs of passes and all that. But who understands the pass on the motion? Among them, I also give kudos to um, the guy that's called that's talking about um, Victor Moses. Another person, also, who he knows he needs to make an impression as well, which is the goalkeeper. You can see, him I was going to come to that. Yeah. I was going to come to yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, let me go to uh, Kelechuku now. Yeah. Kelechuku looking at the attack mm. as it were now, because you expect attackers to do their jobs, put the ball behind the net, but most of our strikers are not living up to the billings. What could be the problem? What could have been the problem? As I said, there was no link or play between the midfield and the attack. Let's cast our minds back to the Nigeria Cameroon game, which ended 1 1. Remember the pass that Mikel gave Igalu, how he held the ball and delayed the pass. Here's the thing Mikel is a plus one to that team. He raises the game for the other players. And it's sad that we have to depend on Mikel to do that. You know, it makes the team look like a basketball Miguel franchise. Now, he's already at his peak. He's at his peak. He's my, he might leave the national team any moment yeah, from now. Exactly. Does it mean that we don't have a replacement for Mikel in that? Not yet. Not yet. Even with the, with the, with the emergency. Here, yeah, now, is not living up to What, what about Joel Obi coming into the uh, team? Joel Obi is supposed to be that other long pass range guy. 
just like Obi Wanko, you know, who came up at the same time with him in 2011. Even Ibrahim, uh, uh, Rabbi Ibrahim. Rabbi Ibrahim came at some point. <laughs> yeah, so we expect Joel Obi to be able to give long passes, but we didn't see that. He was doing grafting against Poland. Yeah, but, but the reason why I won't really want to fault or look at O's is because they probably might be playing to a tactics, which um, to us we might not know. You understand? Now, yeah. now, let me, let me come to you now. Okay. Let's leave Poland behind us. Okay. We are facing Sabia on Tuesday now. That's tomorrow. What do you expect? Because Ross himself came out to tell us that he still has a lot of things to do to put that team in shape. Now, judging from your own perspective now, how would you advise Ro to approach that game against Sabia at the Hive in London come Tuesday? How would you advise him to approach that game? Yeah, I would advise him to approach um, the game in, um, in, in a very, very... Um, serious way. When I mean serious, I mean that he has the tactics in hand and um, he should go on with that tactics. He's not um, going to start bringing on a new tactics. Well, you understand? But the ability to understand who your opponents are gives you a better edge. You understand? We saw in the first half against Poland how physical the Polish were in that game. A lot of people were calling for their red cards and yellow cards. And that, that showed. But the Polish came into the game knowing they are playing an African side. But they were able to pocket a fantastic player, Lewandowski. It was, it was not too, too glaring yeah, in that game. Because the defence did their job. Yeah, defense. Yeah, that's why we say kudos to the in both um, walls. Wall. They did they did that job very well. But let's not be overwhelmed by the fact that that is the Lewandowski that you're going to see in the World Cup. You understand? <laughs> like, you understand because they've got everybody's also playing to the fact that this World Cup, yeah, injury should be so minimal. So playing cautiously. Cautiously, Neymar is on the verge of not missing the World Cup, but he's not in a better situation. Right. Now let me let me let me come let me go to Kelechuku now. Mm. The goal that we scored, mm. people were saying it was a dive. Was there a contact? Was it a re penalty? What is your take on this? Well, I, there was minimal contact. At best, it was soft. So, if, if the referee decided to give it, he could decide. He could have decided not to give it. Actually, so. So it's fifty-fifty. Yeah, it's a fifty-fifty. Might might not. Yeah, yes, yes. But eventually it, gave it. So that's his discretion. So definitely. Is, uh, this is what Nigerians. Why when Nigerians are yeah. when Nigerians are complaining about a dive that brought a goal. You understand? If it's the other way around, there's a need for you to complain. But if it's in your favor as an engineer, I'm fine. Who complains when somebody does wrong and eventually ended up being right? You understand? So if it was a dive and it was in our favor, it was a vibe, it's a fantastic one. No, it you understand? isn't. It isn't. If it's considered a dive, but there was minimal contact. So if it's considered a dive, then as analysts, we can't stay here and say it's a great one. I mean, I listen to EPL and... Tottenham players are beginning to get sticks from EPL commentators. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I understand the fact that I understand if you are two club side. I understand if so. If they side. do it in England, it doesn't mean they would call him a, a Tom Daly. Remember Tom this. Daly? No, no, I right? understand your perspective about mm, the game. So. I'm just being patriotic here. Uh, you understand? No, no, this, 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 no, I understand. This, 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 is, this is not the field for press. For perspective. Don't, don't let us attach patriotism. I mean, the logo here is all Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's bought a goal. Uh, you understand? And for that, it has overtaken whatever led to the goal, away from my own point of view. Okay. If, you are, if you are saying that uh, whether there's a minimal contact or there's no minimal contact, it, uh, the referee is not in no, Nigeria. No, he said, he said at his discretion. Yeah, that makes it correct. The discretion of the at referee. His discretion. That makes it correct. That makes it, that makes it the right of, call. It's, it's, it's a kind of 50 50, and he make that call. At his own discretion. And that makes it the right call. Okay. That okay. makes it, if there's anything I'm going to. If you choose to call the cup half empty or um, or half full, yeah. it's it's your discretion, right? Yeah, I know. But whatever you call, now, is what we are going to we, hold we, on to. We are taking our time on this because right. it's very very important, very pertinent mm. for us to talk about this because in the next couple of hours now, if not 24 hours thereabouts, we are going to play another friendly, and the goalkeeping area is off high important. Away from that, let's talk about Team Nigeria departed. The, the first batch of the Team Nigeria uh, team departed the shore of Nigeria yesterday, that was Sunday, and uh, uh, about 70 athletes from Nigeria departed the shore of Nigeria. And we saw there were lots of things that people were talking about because the competition is going to start on the 4th of April to 15th of April. But the Games Village was open on Sunday for teams to start coming in 
you know, getting themselves ready for the tournament. I'm going to talk about precisely table tennis because when you look at it, um, it's going to, the, 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 they said it's now the federation, not even the sports ministry, that said that they want to prioritize, you know, going for the games because most of the girls have not been able to return with medals over the years representing Nigeria at the Commonwealth Games. Now, this time around, uh, they said that it's going to be all male affair. And you are just letting me know now that only one para table tennis female was included in that team. And the likes of uh, Funkel Shonaike, Ophium Heden, and some other ladies were dropped because they could not bring medals over the years representing Nigeria in the previous Commonwealth Games. Is it the right thing to do at this point in time? Yes, um, to me, uh, it's a fantastic one. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, and I'll give my reasons for thinking, um, for saying that. Um, the, what, um, the Commonwealth Games last um, one we had was in Glasgow. We had five females and five male, and they all came back with just a bronze medal. Oh. Looking at from 2014 and 2018, four years um, has gone down the drain. The development of the male players have gone higher than the female players. We see of recent time, especially the last tournament in Kenya Championship. Funke but Kinaike, but of, of women that came back with bronze medal. Funke Kinaike couldn't come out with any bronze, uh, anything of um, okay, Edem, if, if you draw, from. If you so is, Funke, and, and let, 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 me now, let me now tell you the genesis of this. The f sport ministry acted for just what they could take care of. They had for four athletes. Um, the federation. federation said we can do more than one, we can do more than four. They, div so, um, they gave them five names. And those five names are the best in Africa. Where are we taking? We wouldn't just say because of sentiment and because of it's a lady or gender stuff. They should just bring those people who have not even done. The best in Africa is not our women. The best in Africa and the men are men. Do you understand? See who they took to the, world, to the Commonwealth Games. Arnold Kodri is Nigerian number one player. He's second in Africa. What about Chek Mutoriola? Is, is, is he not as old as this thing? Let, let, me tell, let me tell you. They took Arnold the Kodri. Yeah, let, they took Arnold Kodri there. Arnold Kodri is the first in Nigeria, second in Africa, 22 in the world. He has been winning a lot of pro tour and every championship in Africa and beyond. Even against Omar Alsa. Now, let's look at Shekun Toyola. Table tennis started in Manchester 2002 um, Commonwealth Games. The first person to win that in all nations that came in the men's single event was Shekun Toyola. Well, are we now living in past glory? We, that was 16 years ago. Are we ago. supposed to be living in past glory? We are not living in past glory. Look how recent. Shekun Toyola is the first person to get to the round of 16, even before the round of 16, to the group stage of um, table tennis. Before Ono Koji came to come and give it the quarter final stage of table tennis. No Africa born on earth has been to that. That's Shekunda. We now look at somebody, Biodu um, Biodu Olabode, yeah. um, Bode Abiodu. Bode Abiodu defeated Ono Koji. In, uh, you were there in that game, you understand? In the round of 16 against all odds. Where are you going to put your best leg? Is it for the sake of gender sensitivity? You want to say you are going to put Funke Oshinaike, who has not done so well. I talked with Funke Oshinaike, she was disappointed there. But we have to face reality. You put your money where your mouth is. Sorry, I have to cut you in here. Yeah, I, I, feel, was coming, I was going to come to you. I, I feel there should be a standard of judgment for choosing our table force. tennis players. Yeah, for me, I feel they should start doing trials. Hmm. That's my opinion. And they hmm. should do trials for both the male and the female. Because here's the thing, there's, a go there's going to be a setback. Uh, 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 that, sorry, uh, 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 there's going uh, uh, to... I disagree with your trial, but no, let, speak let, on, let speak on. Let him talk, because we, we need to hear from his uh, own perspective too. There, there, whoa, there, whoa. There's going to be a setback to female tennis. And because you have someone like Esther Oribamiche, who is young, who has lost an exposure opportunity. I mean, in athletics, you have male and female teams for each... I was even going to come to that. Even, even in wrestling, let, 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 wrestling, let, you have both male and female. It's, 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 it's Sorry, two and, and the male and female teams are not doing so well. There should be a qualifier basis. If there was a qualifier basis and the female team fell short, then we can understand their exclusion. But if it is based on... on present forms, what yeah. you've done in Africa, your ranking. Now, let me now tell you something. I understand your perspective. I don't know, Kodi should not come for a trial. 
and mistakenly one person now defeats him. And he's out. You got you see you see that's the mistake they're saying. That's why selection, selection. Or he gets a wild card. Who's giving the wild card? The federation can give the wild card. And you not take the no, that's what I'm saying. If we get see, are with the trials. See, 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 if the white tri if the trials is done with the female, it's understandable. Because okay. a lot of people want to see the error. Well, whether, you understand? Whether, whether but, 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 but the trials, well, you can't tell Shekmo Ola, she can't, okay, like, like now, nah, we saw what Biodin Ola body did to Shekmo Ola, to, um, what's it called? To, to Arnold Kodri. FC Fine Bad defeated uh, reigning champion, Plato United. United score? They, they won 2 1. I said it. They won 2 1. Quara United defeated uh, Kano Pilas 2 1. Lobby Stars defeated uh, Rivers United. By three goes to two. MFM FC came back to defeat Katsina United two goes to one. I think you were in that game. Yeah. Uh, Tornados defeated Sunshine. Sunshine of Akure. Uh, Embattled Sunshine 1 0. Wikitoris defeated Ekanemi three goes to one. And Yobe Desert Start played 1 1 draw with Aimba. And you FC. find you bad defeated Platinum. Yes, I, I, I mentioned that earlier. Reigning champion, they defeated them 3 0. And that's the biggest. Uh, uh, scholar uh, together with Wikitoris Academy, those are the 3-0 uh, biggest uh, results we had in the week 14 results. Junior Lokosa, he can't just stop scoring. Even as much as Pilas lost that game 2-1, he was still able to get on the score sheet. He scored his 12 goals in 14 games in the ongoing season. Yeah, Kano Pilas are able to look for a placement for Gambo Mohamed. It has in the past season, it has always been Mohamed Gambo who has been doing so well for. But do you see this guy, Lokosa, yeah. finishing this league? The but, way he's going. Yeah, the 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 IS goes cover of the history of the because league. Because most is, of them they don't stay. In, yeah, if he doesn't stay, it's a good one for him because you know. But that is why what is not helping our league to grow. Yeah, it's not it's not the talent not helping our league to grow. You understand? Even if they keep moving and moving, so far there should be reasons to stay. If there's no reasons to stay, then there should be a reason to leave. You understand? It goes beyond. Um, it's not as if it's his father that owns MPFL. It's his personal career and he needs to proceed. Um, let's hope that he could cancel the 23 um, gold. The way uh, this guy is going, yeah, um, for, um, for, um, I said um, three or four seasons ago. Mm. Let's hope that. And let's not forget, this is just um, the first um, quarter. standard quarter of, um, of the MPFL. Let's see what will happen in the next. Let's look at 20, 12 goals in 14 games. We have 38 games. That means he's going to score. Looking at this statistic, he's going to score 24 goals. Okay, okay. In 20, let, me, let me go to Kelechukul here now. Mm. Do you see the growth drying up for Lukosa? Uh, maybe in the second quarter or the third quarter of the league? Because the way it's going now, it's red hot. The scoring goes like a normal business. Do you see the goals at some point drying up for him? If the midfield, if the club, the forward players keep playing for him, if, you, if guys like Al Hassan Ibrahim, Rabi Wali, if they keep playing for him and around him, I think he'll keep doing well. But I just wanted to address some of the reasons, some things you brought up before. You were asking why MPFL clubs results. don't get away results. For me, there are two reasons. The road network slash the mode of travel and penalties. Mm, penalty, I was going to yes. come to that. So we had about me, eight so penalties you mean you don't in ten games. Yeah, so you see, Almost nine, just, nine penalties, just, just if I'm not uh, wrong. You don't ex and plus, besides that, you don't expect somebody to travel via bus on Nigerian roads and then you expect the person to come and give his optimum capacity. That's why someone like Fidel Iselechi would prefer to play a weekend team when he travels abroad, so he can come back here and consolidate. That's Kile uh, Fidel Iselechuku? Yeah, Iselechuku. As a coach of, a coach of, a coach of, MFM. of MFM. You were in that game, MFM, Katina United. MFM came from behind to win that game. You know, is it the home advantage uh, thing that eventually won it for MFM? MFM won this game last season, so that's expected. And for someone that um, against Katina United, who has come to the league after a very, very long time, or perhaps this is a debut um, um, season, you should expect that against. Um, um, MFM, but you, you want to see how impossible, how possible sometimes the away team can actually win. But fortunately, it doesn't really come to place. For example, I don't think there's a penalty in this game, and um, we saw um, MFM winning. So MFM winning shows that um, it is not just some advantage, it's a better side in that game. But I want to take my attention back to Lobby. I was thinking when Lobby got to the... 90th um, minute penalty. penalty. Yeah. We, we, we it's, always, it's always very, very, you know, painful. It's, it's something that administration should look into. There's more reason to sanitize the referees. There's more reason to see why um, there should be neutrality in the officiating. 
no matter how we preach um, neutrality, how we preach sensitivity, in the um, how we preach uh, 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 um, sanitization, the referees have shown several times they are still far from what we expect. It's a pleasure having you, uh, Mother Shuri Shitu. Uh, always, always a pleasure to have you around. Yeah. And I hope when I call again, you will answer me. Uh, it's interesting you. having yeah. you very good analysis. Thank and you. I know when you have the opportunity again, you will definitely, you know, get it and grab grab your hands. Yeah, sure. So that's the way we're going to be dropping Hancock here in the studio. Thanks for watching. And keep your comments and your reaction coming as far as all the things we have talked so far here in the studio.